Okay, a few things have happened since the last video. I have, I didn't find the seat post kickback that I think I might still want to get, but I did raise the stem. I cut the old stem right here and put, added a piece of pipe and raised it up, and that's because this frame seems to be kind of small. It was uncomfortable. Um, I did put new bottom bracket bearings in there. Either I toasted them with my welding or they just weren't that great to begin with. They were kind of gravelly sounding. Of course I painted it and I put the little box up here and I reinforced the kickstand. Um, it didn't cause any problems but it just felt kind of limber and I didn't want it to break. So I added some more steel and welded on it. And now I want a motor. Um, keyword want. I don't need a motor. I don't have to have a motor but I want a motor. So, wanting a motor, you got to make some decisions. Um, there's lots and lots and lots of types, but there's three mainstream types. There's a hub motor for the front wheel, hub motor for the back wheel, or some sort of motor that goes in the center and drives the chain. Um, I looked at a couple of front hub motors, shied away from that because the bike's a little goofy driving already, and I thought having it pull from the front wheel just I don't know I just didn't want the motor up there um, shied away from the bottom bracket motors although the center of gravity would have been better because they were a little more complex mechanically and they also used the bicycle chain to drive the back wheel which means you're putting a little added load on all the shifters and the derailers and if somebody's on it that's not real good at shifting I don't know it just seemed like Maybe not such a bad, good idea. So I went with a rear hub motor. Now, hub motors, they are, you know, lots of derivatives, but there are two main types of hub motors. There's a gear motor and a direct motor. Um, the gear motor has a smaller motor, and it makes up for this smaller motor by having planetary gears. The motor spins fast, and you get your torque from the gear down part inside the planetary gears. So you can just spot them by looking at them. The motors are always smaller on the hub motors. Um, the, and their direct drive motors, they are not geared down. So in order to have enough power to push the bike, they tend to be bigger in diameter with more magnetic um, poles. Or yeah, I'm not sure what that would be called. So if you're looking at a bike with a rear motor, you can tell instantly what it is because the hub motors are small and the direct drive motors are big. Um, the direct drive motors tend to be faster because they're not geared down. They tend to be a little lower on torque because they're not geared down, so slower getting off the line. Um, this bike is a heavy, clunky bike, so it doesn't need high top speed. We don't need to be going fast. We're old, both of us. So Gear motors have the advantage of when you're pedaling without motor power, they don't present extra drag, the exception of the added weight. And the direct drive motors do. you got to pull the motor around and around. So went with the gear motor and ordered it. Um, I didn't get a big one. They come in 250, 500, 750, 000, 1500 watts. I got a 500 watt, which is kind of small these days, but that's okay. It's just me and my wife. We don't want to go fast. We just want to putz around. Um, it's a kit. They come with the wheel. Typically, you take the tire off your bike and put it on here, but I've ordered a new tire because I don't have any idea how old that tire is. And I was going to use my tube that I have, but it's a pressed a valve, so I'm going to have to get a new tube. Um, comes with a little brain, the control box. Comes with a little display that you put on your handlebars. Comes with a new rear sprocket set that fits this wheel. Um, it comes with brake calipers that are going to be a little bit of a problem. These have a switch in them, which is a safety switch. It kills the motor when you touch the brakes but my brake handles and my shifters are built into one so I'm gonna to have to do something with this. Um, it comes with a sensor that you put on the crank so the computer knows that you're pedaling and it knows how fast you're pedaling and that's how it tells the motor to go. It does not know how hard you're pedaling so that's where this little dude comes in and there's different power settings you can set on it um, on the fly and typically the motors don't come with a battery, the battery's separate and here's the battery, it's a 36 volt battery that's a 36 volt motor comes with a charger 
comes with a bracket that's built in and you unlock it and you take the battery off your bike for safekeeping or to bring it inside and charge it and I hadn't figured out how to get it off yet so we're gonna start the build with the exception of I don't have the tire from uh, Amazon yet so all I can start on right now is some of the periphery things and I hope this is not an omen of things to come but the very first thing I tried to mount was the little deal that holds the computer screen and the bolts are not anywhere near long enough so I had to use my own which is no big deal except they're not stainless steel so I should replace them one day in the future but who knows and the second thing I wanted to do was put on the brake calipers but I can't use these calipers on my bike so what I did was I took it all apart and I unsoldered the teeny tiny little wires that I got to solder back somehow and I got to mount this little thing onto my brake calipers that are on the bike because if because if this little yellow switch is not depressed um, I'm assuming that puts the brakes on so I'm gonna have to make some sort of little bracket to uh, make this thing work so I drilled two holes in this little piece of fiberglass and now I'm gonna cut it roughly on that black line that back line break it in half and it's gonna be two little bitty angle brackets and I'm gonna attempt to glue them glue them under the brake lever and I'll have to glue a little stop on this side to try to make this thing work. It's a shame I have to start out like this. So I rotated the brake lever all the way around just so I could get to it better. And I sanded these little brackets down smaller so they would be neater. I sanded the brake lever so it would be clean metal and cleaned it with a, um, alcohol. And now it is glued on there. So tomorrow I can glue the part on the lever. See how that works. The axles that came on the wheel that came with the e motor, well, the e motor wheel, are a little heavier than the original. They're a little bigger, so they would not fit in the rear stays. So I just had to open them up a little bit. So this is item number three that right out the box I'm having to uh, make some adjustments on. This is the little torque arm. It has a uh, flat size that max, match the axle. And I'm assuming it's to keep the, uh, the axle from spinning when the engine generates torque. And they want to keep it off of this uh, bolt because this bolt's hollow. There's not a lot of meat left in this bolt. So it's supposed to slide over the bolt and, or the axle. And I think it's supposed to bolt for one of these two little ears, but it doesn't fit. But if I put the bolt in, this bolt in backwards and slide it over the uh, cord and put it in here, the bolt head fits right in that little corner between these two rear stays, so nothing will be able to turn. So I just need to tighten this up before I put it on, because I won't be able to get the Allen wrench in there after the fact. So this is one more thing I've had to jury rig. To make this work but the wheel is on got a new tire new tube so far making progress very rainy early morning but in the shop it's dry and we made some progress the back wheel is on and the torque arm fits and I install this rack it came with this little bike and I'm I need it because the battery the frame so small the battery doesn't really fit inside the frame so I'm putting the battery on the little rack and this is the battery support and luckily I had these little stainless steel clips and they fit right under here so I've got two of them on them I'll put one more in the middle um, up front I got the little controller mounted with no problem and I got the thumb throttle mounted. I just had to slide the brake over a little bit. This morning I'll turn these back over and finish my safety switch. <clears throat> this is the little $10 tool that I didn't have when I was doing all my welding. 
Um, it's the tool that you pretty much have to have to pull the uh, aluminum um, cranks off of the axle because they're really uh, forced on there tight. And with the tool, it's pretty much cake. So um, one end of the tool is the socket that fits the nut so you can get the nut out of the crank. And the other end screws into some threads that are in the crank and then there's a bolt in the middle that you tighten down and it's like a little it's like a gear puller but it's inside out and it pops the little cranks off um, easy smeezy if I would have had this while I was welding I probably would have not um, messed up that bottom bracket the bearings saved myself $27 I don't know that but most likely I, I'm the one who caused the bearing problem by uh, with all the heat from the welding So the little tool set I bought also comes with this special socket that you have to have to unscrew the, I guess you call them lock rings that hold the bearings in there. Um, the side that I'm working on is plastic so you can't like even use a hammer and a screwdriver which I want to do because you just, the thing just falls apart. The other side is steel and it needs to be in there pretty tight. With this tool, no problemo. So you have to take this plastic side off it's got a little minute flange on it that you almost can't see and you put this magnetic sensor behind it and I guess all bikes are the same size because they didn't ask me but it fits and that keeps this sensor tight against the bike frame um, it doesn't keep the sensor tight it needs a tie wrap but it keeps it away from the crank so after you tighten up the little plastic thing and get it back in there and keep from cross threading it, which is I was trying hard not to do right here, um, then you slip on another ring that's a friction fit and it's got lots of little magnets in it. So the magnets crossing over in front of this little sensor is how the little computer knows that one, you're cranking the cranks and two, how fast you're cranking them. So it's kind of ingenious. Um, it's a simple little deal. But if you don't have that special tool, you're going to screw up. Trust me. Mount the controller right here. Kind of like got a lot of sharp edges. Um, and I'm going to put a plate here and a plate here and screw it into this bottom uh, tube. Really, it just doesn't really uh, doesn't look good no matter where I put it. But I think that's going to be the easiest spot. So the controller is bolted on, the wires from the battery clip are run to the controller, the wires from the motor, and the wires from the pedal sensor are all run to the motor, I mean to the controller, and uh, neatened up. And now I need to do what is not going to be easy. Now I need to get my shaky hands to solder this little bitty wire back on this little micro switch. I got it tied down just so it won't move around. Wish me luck. So in practical terms, these switches do nothing because when you quit pedaling, the motor stops. Or if you let go of the little thumb throttle, the motor stops. But I guess in the event that you have some sort of glitch in the controls or something like that, this is just a safety feature. This is just another way to get the motor to stop. So it's like a backup safety. Um, I'm not even sure if I had to put them on. but. Uh, just to be safe and there'll be kids involved so we went to safe route I got them working okay we just need to reapply the heat shrink 
and glue a little deal on there to push the button in. Amazing it worked. So I made the button pusher out of a little bitty piece of uh, fiberglass. I'm going to glue it on. And if this fails, it won't be the end of the world. It'll just mean the bike won't go. It doesn't mean the bike won't stop. So it's okay. I roughened up the aluminum on the handle so it has a better chance. Okay, that's one. Okay, seems to work. I need to turn the things right side up and hook up all the wires and we're, I think we're done. Okay, installation is complete and I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, first is kind of low, second is a nice little cruising speed of about 10 to 12 miles an hour. 13 is a little uncomfortable if the street's bouncy. And I stayed out of, well I got up to 20 in 4th gear and I hadn't put in 5th gear yet. I'm calling them gears, they're not really gears, they're speeds. But uh, pretty happy and I got 3 miles on it and I still have 100% of the battery. So I'm not sure what that means. But anyway, let's see if I can get the bride on this thing. I'm a little irritated with the bike com the company that sold me the rims. Um, First day I had a flat and I found a sharp spot. I got it covered up now, unfortunately. I found a sharp spot where they drilled a hole for the spoke nut and it had a jagged edge. And I said, well, oh, okay, that, that must be it. So I filed it and I patched the tube and I put it back. And the next day I was farther from home and I had another flat. So I came home, took the thing apart, which is not as easy as a regular bike. And I blew the tube up and you can see the tube getting cut at every single spoke hole. The holes are so big and so sharp, and even though it came with the um, liner, this red liner, I guess the air pressure was pushing the tube into that spoke hole because it's pretty big, and it was starting to cut every single spoke hole. You can't see it now. I have to blow it up real big, and you can see it. So what I did was I wrapped the rim with four layers of duct tape. Took duct, duct tape and ripped it thin enough to go in that groove and I ran around four different times and then I put the little red strip back on top. So I got my fingers crossed that that will protect the tube from those sharp liners. And then I bought a heavier tube than, than original. This is uh, one of those uh, tubes that are supposed to fix themselves. But we'll see. So putting the tube back together, trying to get the bike back together. And don't forget to mention the kit came with these socks. I don't know, they don't look too comfortable. I probably never wear them. 21 miles on the odometer, battery's still at 80%. Um, I usually cruise slow. If you're a young guy, you want to go fast, you might need a bigger motor and a bigger battery. For us, this is perfect. I love this thing. The kids love it. We spent a lot of time putzing around.